everybody and welcome to another day at Super CSSM. It is Wednesday and today we're going to be having some more songs. We're going to be listening to another interview and are you looking forward to another story from Ken? Yeah! Today in our Bible story we're going to be hearing about Moses. Now he's someone you might know about as someone who separated the Red Sea well, today we're going to hear another bit of Moses' story and you can see what you can find out about what it means to step out in faith from Moses' life. And as always, we're going to start our day with a prayer because it's great to be able to talk to our Father in Heaven. So let's pray together. Okay, so we're going to pray now and talk to God. So let's take one hand out and the other one up above your head one side and the other one Bring them both down and come together so that we can not be fidgeting and we're going to close our eyes so we can focus on God. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. We pray for the person who's going to be speaking today that you would be with them and that you would be sharing your word through them. I pray for all the boys and girls who are listening that they would be able to pay attention carefully and see what you're trying to speak through the, through the word today. We thank you for Super CSSM and we pray for the rest of this week that it would go really well. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. and seas who paints the dawn hangs the stars and takes my sin and makes it gone who is wiser who is stronger who has the power and who is the king Jesus 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 is the one from the dawn of time until time is done Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the one The one who was and is to come
here, Bob, Bob, Bob. Are you, are you sure it's him? Yes, definitely. We have an exclusive report right here. Moses is back. He seems to be back for some family reunion of sorts. Must be with the Pharaoh. Okay, okay. I mean, it's, it's a bit strange, but we'll go with it. Get him, get him set up, it get is. him ready yeah. to go. And he's yeah, let's do this. He's gonna come for an interview. Roisin, the coffee. Roisin, where is that coffee? And he's coming to powder my nose. <sighs> okay, I'm ready. I'm ready, that's real. Welcome to Good Morning Cairo. We are here live from our studios right beside Pharaoh's Pyramids and boy do we have an exclusive for you today. We have found the one and only Prince Moses. Firstly, Moses, welcome back to Egypt. It's been a long time. Hello, it's good to be back. It's good to see my family. Pharaoh, yes, I heard um, I heard you went to see and saw him. No, not Pharaoh, my real family, Aaron and Miriam. Oh, oh, okay. Well, what the real Egyptian public want to know is where have you been all this time and by the looks of it you've certainly gone down in the world and what happened to those sandals that you were wearing, the jewels, what happened to you Moses? As you said when I was living here in the palace I had some jeweled sandals and uh, I found out that I'm not an Egyptian so I had to leave. Moses, I'm shocked, you're not an Egyptian, then who are you? Uh, I'm an Israelite, I'm a slave, you may remember at the time uh, the pharaoh was killing all the baby boys that were Hebrews mm. and um, my mum, she put me into the river mm -hmm. and so that I wasn't killed and then I was found by pharaoh's sister and she took me out of the river and she looked after me and brought me into the palace and I'm really grateful for her to look after me. And so what then? I found out that I was a Hebrew so mm -hmm. I, I had to leave and I traded my sandals, the jeweled sandals that you're so interested in and I changed them for shepherd sandals mm. and I went and I looked after sheep and I became a shepherd. A shepherd and so you ran away? Yeah I had to run away because I had to change things that the people here weren't being treated right but I, I didn't go about changing things in the right way so I had to run away. And where did you run to? Uh, I ran to Midian and looked after the sheep there. Uh, I met my wife there and I met God there. God, wow. So a prince of Egypt, the prince of Egypt, ladies and gentlemen, is now looking after sheep. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. What a come down. And wait, sorry, did you say you found God there? Or yeah. God found you? God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And he actually, when I met him, he was really interested in these sandals that you're so interested in as well. He told me to take them off when I was meeting him because the ground was holy because God is holy. So, let me get this straight. He asked you to take your sandals off. And did he say anything else to you? Yes, God said that he heard the cries of his people and that I had to come and tell Pharaoh to let his people go. Okay, and to clarify, so you came back not, not to ask for your place back in the palace, to not to ask the Pharaoh back for your royalty here in Egypt, but you came to tell him to let the Israelites go, to to let the people that do everything around here go to leave Egypt? Yes. <sighs> right. But why? Why Why would you give up those sandals? Why would you give up your prince title? Why would you give up all these great things that Egypt can offer you? And to make Pharaoh mad, would you not prefer for him to be your brother again, to have your family back? I can see how you could see that looking at it with your Egypt only eyes. I, I've met God, the true living God, and he asked me to step out in faith and to trust him. And then it might get tricky, but we can trust him mm. and that God will always keep his promises. Mm. And he's promised to look after his people, to give them a land to live in, and he will always keep his promises. Sorry, sorry Moses, sorry to cut across you. I think, yes, we're getting some breaking news. And what's going on down there by the yes. Nile? Yes, Siobhan, yes, hello, Deirdre, Deirdre here. I am at the Nile, I am, I am in denial because I have just heard, just heard that Pharaoh has taken away the Israelites' straw. I mean, it's just the final straw. I don't, I don't know how they're gonna make bricks without straw. Good luck to you. This is slavery at its worst. Back to you, Siobhan. Wow, that's harsh. And Moses, what, what do you have to say to that? Pharaoh, listen up. You've got to let my people go. So that's it, that's it, Moses. There's, there's no going back. 
Uh, there's no chance of giving up this <laughs> ridiculous idea um, and doing what God says, even though it's probably going to be a disaster. Yes, I trust God and trust that he will always keep his promises. Well, well, there you have it, folks. The one time Prince of Egypt going up against Pharaoh, the one and only, our powerful Pharaoh. Um, thank you, Moses, for joining us. Um, we really hope your mission fails. God's mission never fails. Right, well, it's time for a commercial break, and I certainly need one. <laughs> It's quiz time. I love a good quiz, and this one's gonna be super easy. I'm gonna give you three hints, and you have to guess which Bible character it is, okay? Are you ready? Here we go. Number one, this person was saved by someone who wasn't his mother, okay? Number two, this person was rescued by being floated down a river in a basket. That's a bit easy, wasn't it? No, no, it's fine. Number three, this person used a staff to split the sea and he walked through on dry land. Have you got it yet? That's right, it's Moses. Now the Bible talks all about Moses in the Old Testament. He was kind of a big deal. You see, in the Bible, God had his very own nation and they were called Israel. You see, it all started with a promise to a guy called Abraham. Abraham had sons and daughters, and they had sons and daughters, and it went on like that for years and years until there was loads of them, like a whole country full of them. But the Bible tells us that this nation became slaves in a country called Egypt, and the king of Egypt made them build all his cities and his statues. And every day, the people of Israel would cry out to God to deliver them. It's actually a really good movie about it on Netflix. <laughs> but this is where Moses comes in. You see, Moses would be the one who God would use to set his people free. But like most things in life, it got a bit complicated. Moses was born to Israelite parents. Now this was bad enough back then because it meant that he was now a slave. But in the time that Moses was born, the king of Egypt made a law that every Israelite baby boy born must be killed. So to save him, Moses' parents put him in a basket and floated him down the river. Risky, I know, but desperate times call for desperate measures. But as luck would have it, Moses floated right into the palace and up to the daughter of the king of Egypt. Moses would be raised in the palace. He was now the adopted grandson of the most powerful man in the world at that time, and he would have everything he ever needed. He would have pizza on demand. He could stay up as late as he wanted. He would be set for life. But as we read in our Bible reading for today, it says this. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought that it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward. Now, it's a pretty long story, but the Bible tells us that Moses chose to give up that palace life to serve God. The book of Exodus tells us all about Moses' journey with God. He wandered in the desert for 40 years. He had to fight so many battles and wars along the way. So why would someone give up being a prince, living in a palace, to live in a desert, to lead an ungrateful people to a strange new land? Oh. <laughs> being a follower of Jesus can sometimes be tough. Now I started following Jesus when I was 15 years old. And I wasn't raised to be a Christian or anything like that. But I found myself at a summer camp because a girl I fancied was going to be there. And even though I wasn't into all that Christian stuff, by the end of the camp, I had seen the love of God so clearly and seen that his way of life was so much better that I decided to give my whole life to Jesus. And I got the girl. <laughs> but I then faced the challenge of going home and explaining to my friends what had happened to me over the summer. I was made fun of a lot by my friends and other kids back then. They called me God boy and Bible thumper. But I loved reading the Bible and I was super passionate about reading it every day. I would even bring my Bible to school so I could read it at breaks or if we had a free class. Now this led to the other kids calling me Bible boy. 
not that original I know, but bullies are very rarely the most creative bunch. Now I have to admit, my first few months of school were tough after my experiences at summer camp. But I soon found a new community in my local church and I started going to a youth group and spending my time with teenagers who took their faith as seriously as I did. But there was always a temptation to hide my faith when I was at school. But the more I stayed true to who I really was, the more people respected me. People soon stopped making fun of me. And they would even ask me questions about what I believed in or about the Bible. In our reading from Hebrews today, it says that Moses was happy to give up his life in the palace and face the hardship ahead of him. He could do this because he had his eyes set on the prize. He knew that a life with God was far better than a life of luxury in the palace. And it makes me think of Jesus, who was happy to give up his home in heaven, to face hardship for us because he loved us and wanted to be with us. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you love us, that you gave up luxury in heaven to come and live among us. Thank you that you faced hardship so that you could be with us, so that we could spend eternity with you. We know the following you can be tough, but we know that it will always be worth it. Thank you that we have the Holy Spirit to help us. Amen. Here we go! God gave us a job To bring his word to the lost and blind God showed us the way Show them his love, show his love. We can whisper it, or we can shout it, we can speak it, or we can sing it, we can draw it, or we can paint it. We have to live it, yeah. Shout it out where the people of God. Shout it out where the people of You just never know when you go on a journey where God is going to take you. 
Today's story is about a young Irish man who went out through this beautiful harbour here. He didn't know it at the time, but his journey was going to take him to New Zealand, and to India, and to parts of Africa. And God was going to use him to start a really important work that would change the world. And that work is still going on today. A young man called Wellesley Bailey kissed his girlfriend Alice goodbye and stepped onto the ship in Dunleary Harbour. He couldn't have known that God was going to use this journey to change his life and the lives of millions of other people. Wellesley stopped in England on his great big journey to New Zealand. He had promised Alice that wherever he was in the world, he would go to church on Sundays. It was Sunday, so he put on his best shoes and his best clothes and headed off to church. That Sunday was special for him. As he listened to the preacher, he understood for the very first time about Jesus and all that he did so that we could be part of God's family. Right there, Wellesley decided to follow Jesus and promised that wherever he found himself in the world, he would do whatever Jesus needed him to do. Wellesley continued his journey to New Zealand. After all, he was going there to pan for gold and to get rich. But he didn't find any gold, and he had to come home. Not long after, he decided on another journey, this time to India. When he was there, he met poor people living in houses made of sticks and leaves. They had a bad disease called leprosy. We don't get it in this part of the world, but in some countries, it still causes people's hands and feet to stop working. It causes their eyes to close and their noses to twist. Wellesley remembered reading that Jesus cared for people with this cruel disease. The Bible, he remembered, told of one day when Jesus cured 10 people with leprosy. He knew that Jesus would want him to do everything he could to take care of people like this. Wellesley came back to Ireland. He told stories of the people he met to Alice's friends, the Pym sisters. They agreed to raise money and sent Wellesley and Alice to India to care for people with leprosy. That was the start of the leprosy mission. That was more than 140 years ago. And since then, because of the work of the leprosy mission, millions and millions of people have heard the good news about Jesus and have been cured of this terrible disease. Some people say to be successful means that you must make lots of money and get rich. Other people say success is measured by how clever you are and how many degrees you have. Still other people say that if you want to be successful, you must have rich and famous friends. Wellesley didn't get rich. He never found that gold. He wasn't the cleverest. He really had no interest in school. His friends were some of the poorest beggars in the world. But Wellesley was successful. Look at the work he left behind and the number of lives he impacted. He was successful because he found what God wanted him to do in the world. Make sure you find the most important thing.
Hi there. Um, my name is Mr. Sandal, and I'm a sandal salesman. Hi. Um, before nice I to get to selling, I like to find out a bit about my customers. So, mm -hmm. could you tell me your name? Yeah, my name is Caitlin. Nice to meet you. Fantastic. And then, um, could you tell me the most wildest thing you've done during lockdown? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> I've done lots of jigsaws. I'm like a jigsaw head. So yeah, I love jigsaws. I've done at least like 13 since quarantine. That is yeah. wild. Yeah. It's fantastic. Wild, yeah. Here, look, um, I've got this fantastic ladies sandal. It is um, blue and brown, mm. lovely heel. Really add a couple mm. of inches onto your height there. Would you be interested in purchasing? Oh, I might be tempted, I might be tempted. Do you might have any be. other colours? Um, no. Oh, no. well, then that's kind of... Oh, okay. I'm sorry. All right, yeah. well, look, I'll try later. But I see you've got a pair of shoes there. Yeah, I do. Slippers. Could you tell me a bit about them? Yeah, these are my favourite shoes, actually. Oh. Yeah, I, they're very warm and cosy. I got them for my birthday. Fantastic. In December, so yeah. Fantastic. And um, in your day-to-day -day life, where do you like to step out into? Well... I've been at home a lot recently. I don't know why, but I've been home. Okay. So I've been wearing these around the house a lot, and I love, I love them. I say they're very comfy around the house. Oh, yeah. yeah. But um, on to a more serious question. Could you mm -hmm. tell me about a time you stepped out in faith? Oh, yeah. So about two years ago, there was a group of 20 people going to Romania to build a house. Okay. So I applied for it and fortunately I got it as well, That's which it. I was very happy about. But the more I thought about it, the more worried I was. I mean, I've never built a house before. I didn't know what to expect, especially because we'll be building in a heat wave as well, which was supposed to happen. So I was, yeah, <laughs> so I was very worried. But then I said one day, no, I'm going to pray about it. So I was praying over a couple of days and the more I prayed, the more I felt at peace with the whole situation and it made me feel so much better. Here, look, um, one last chance to buy a fantastic ladies sandal slash shoe. I'm tempted, but I'm going to have to say no, but thank All you. All right, look, thanks mm. for chatting, okay? Thank you.